Well, dumping a bucket of ice water over your head, the concept of the ice bucket challenge, it, I mean, it was pretty simple. In 2014, millions of us did it, and it led to millions of dollars in donations. We are starting to see all of that pay off in research. Yeah, here to tell us what's new from the ALS Association, Pat Ryan's here, and Marty Cordero, of course, we know this guy, the general manager of the Omaha Storm Chasers. Gentlemen, thanks for stopping and, by this morning. And the Prez. <laughs> and the Prez. I'm whatever. What don't I'm you whatever. do there? Good to see you, Marty. And Pat, Good nice to, you to meet you. Yeah, for so, us. refresh our memories on the Ice Bucket Challenge. Uh, how did this thing get started and, and where did it take us? It took us to a whole lot of money, I remember that. Yeah, it brought in a lot of money for us. So, it kind of got started with three men who had ALS. Uh, they kind of just went to social media and kind of challenged their friends and family to either donate to ALS or dump a bucket of water on their head, ice water on their heads. And it just kind of snowballed from there. And it just really took off and brought in about $150 million for um, the association, which was incredible. I wish That's we could do that every year. Every year. year. Right. And every other organization was yeah. trying to figure out, like, what's the next yeah. ice bucket challenge? Yeah. What can we do to get people this excited about mm -hmm. it? The money was coming in. The awareness was something else that I remember patients talking about. It was really important to them that mm -hmm. as a society, people understood ALS a little bit more. What were you hearing at that time about the spotlight on ALS? Um, well, at that time, people before the Ice Bucket Challenge, if you didn't have a connection or a family member that had it, you, a lot of people didn't really know what it was. Mm -hmm. So that's what patients really liked about it, that it kind of brought a whole bunch of awareness to actually educate the entire nation about uh -huh. what the, exactly the disease is. Really only known as the Garrett's disease. That's right. Before yeah. the Ice Bucket Challenge, yeah. it was, you know, the baseball player disease, and it really opened up truly the challenges that oh, not only Mary. people that have ALS, <laughs> yeah. but I'm sorry, Marty. No, that's fine. I'm sorry, we just. I mean, oh, here it is, oh, Pat. We were talking about this. Yeah. Slow mo. But <laughs> the reactions that you saw all over media, I mean, very similar to this. Mm -hmm. But what has this done locally here? I mean, the, all the, the money that came in, mm -hmm. what has happened locally? So, locally, it brought in about a million dollars for us, and that allowed us to hire a care services specialist out in western Nebraska, um, which we didn't have before. So, it kind of lets us have more coverage of our patients. Mm -hmm. We cover all of Nebraska, Kansas, and western Missouri. Um, and that also allowed us to open up a clinic in Columbia, Missouri, wow. and also to better fund our um, Center of Excellence, our clinic at UNMC. Yeah. And then I was also um, in some of the national news, maybe two weeks ago, I was hearing about some of the, the research and a, a really um, impactful discovery mm -hmm. genetically. Mm -hmm. what, what have researchers found? So since the Ice Bucket Challenge, it's, they've, kind of a, they've found a few genes that mm -hmm. are connected to ALS, and the big one a few weeks ago was the NEK1 gene, mm -hmm. which is found, which is interesting because it's found in both familial and sporadic cases. Um, sporadic cases are the majority of ALS patients, about 90 percent, and oh. the familial are about 10 percent, and this one's found in both. So they're hoping that that can lead to further discoveries for a treatment and hopefully a cure. Okay, we're going to talk about this event with Marty in a second. Yes. But uh, what can we, what can people do if they're interested in supporting the cause? So if they're interested in supporting, they can come out to our walk that we have at Warner Park. Marty has hosted us out there for the past few mm -hmm. years. Um, so we're very thankful to have that. It's uh, this Saturday, August 13th. Mm -hmm. uh, Check-in starts at 9. The walk starts at 1030. Marty, uh, why do you do this? Why? Mm -hmm. It's important. You know, we, we such a great community Omaha is, and this is something that has been close to my heart. Now it's been my tenth walk this year, and I've been on the uh, regional advisory council, and I've served as a walk chair and a, a number of different uh, different areas and different functions on the group. But in, most important, you know, it goes back to the ice bucket challenge. We want to continue to create awareness. Mm -hmm. We want people to know. Uh, what those that are fighting ALS go, go through, but sometimes what's left out are the caretakers and the mm -hmm. family members yeah. that put their lives on hold, put their jobs and careers on hold because, you know, you get ALS, you're going to die from two to five years. Mm -hmm. It is a reality right now, and mm -hmm. some people last 10, 15 years, but the majority is two to five. And, you know, 10 years ago, I didn't have a connection other than baseball. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been to numerous funerals and I have numerous friends that are fighting it and numerous families that I've gotten to know and for me it's become personal mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, that's why we continue to do it as an organization but really more me personally and you know I'm just glad that I'm able to help make a small difference and it's mm -hmm. fun you know this is a fun event though come out mm -hmm. nine o'clock uh, 1030 walk it's around the ballpark uh, the Central Family Fun Zone is open mm -hmm. Um, and I know Steve Swanstrom and Don were here recently. Uh -huh. You know, Centris yeah. has really stepped up this year as a big corporate partner. And it's a free event, a free event. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's about a mile So how stroll. do you raise money if it's free? 
You uh, ask people we to fundraise. When they get the there. teams fundraise. You know, you can either join. You know, our team still has spots uh, if if you want to to go to Omaha Storm Chasers team, but mm -hmm. you can just come and register. And uh, but but fundraise. Uh, yeah. That you know, your friends, family, corporations. There's a number of ways. On the website's right there at the bottom. Walk to defeat ALS .org, mm -hmm. If you want to take part in this walk, uh, mm -hmm. Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12. And then, Pat, how can our viewers plug into your organization after August 13th? Where after do they go? They can go to uh, ALSA.org and find our chapter, the Mid-America chapter. And back to that awareness thing, uh, Pat, we want to get you back on the show so we can talk. We didn't have enough time to cover what mm -hmm. ALS actually does and why this is so devastating mm -hmm. for not only the patients, and the, but the families as well. So mm -hmm. let's connect again. Okay, sounds good. Good, good. to have you. Marty, good right. to see you as Mike, always. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Thank you. Thank, Thank you both you. for having us. The phrase, tin goose, it kind of sounds like something you'd stick in the yard, right? A piece of lawn decor, but it's far from it. In our picture of the day, we'll show you the real tin goose, one of the... Few in its condition in the world, and where you'll find it right here in Omaha.